Hello there, my name is Brandon and welcome to the third and final video in our three-part series about creating illustrations from 3D models within Clip Studio Paint. In the previous video, we started some pixel art line work over the model, and in this video we're going to complete the illustration with some color and other finishing details. So let's get to it. I like the yellow coloring for the bike, like how it is in the 3D model, and my idea for the color on this piece was to keep things quite soft, almost pastel-like or kind of faded in a way, and I've pre-selected a handful of colors to provide this look. When selecting softer colors like this, it's important to keep the saturation low and the brightness or value fairly high. So in this palette, for example, the saturation is below 50% for each of these colors, and the value is somewhere between 80 and 100%. Now, I don't necessarily need to limit myself to only these four colors. What I'm gonna do is open up a tool called the Intermediate Palette, and this allows you to drop in up to four colors, and then it'll provide an array of mixed colors in between those. You can toggle the number of steps by changing the grid tile size in the menu. And in my case, I'm okay with the number of steps provided when setting this to the large tiles option. So to get going, I'm using the Millie pen set to a larger brush size. And I start going around the drawing to lay in some of those base colors. I'm mostly sticking to the original four that I planned out, but where I felt like certain pieces could use a softer touch or something in between, I'd grab one of those intermediate tones to introduce that new color. Because these in-between tones are derived from the original four colors, they automatically fit in quite well and provide this gradual step in hue that helps blend areas together, um, while also providing more options to differentiate each piece of the bike. And to make things easier, I'm just painting these in on a new layer underneath the line work layer. And so if I just turn that off for a second, you can see just how rough and approximate I'm actually able to be with this arrangement. And part of that was kind of by design, to be honest. Uh, I wanted this to have like a bit of an organic feel to it in a way. Like just not being super concerned about having it fall perfectly in the lines or anything like that. To add to this, I'd use these intermediate colors to provide a bit of blending between areas. Like if we're stepping from the yellow to the orange, I'd kind of soften that transition with a tone that's halfway between those two. Additionally, I started using these tones to provide a bit of roughing or weathering along the edges kind of creating these patchy areas that make it look like the colors are washing together a bit. Now this also had the benefit of working within the context of the illustration too, where it could be interpreted as some weathering on the bike itself. Now, if you recall, we worked up a bit of a placeholder background for the 3D model version of this. And I wanted to bring in some subtle suggestion of a backdrop into the pixel art as well. So with this layer visible, I'm just gonna lay in a solid background color using that original horizon as a guide. From here, I'm gonna go in with my brush tool because I actually just imported these special brushes for designing clouds. And these are available through the Clip Studio Assets page. And you can see that they're set up to give these like puffy cloud shapes with this really soft edge. And I just went ahead and explored a few of those different tips to lay in a backdrop of clouds here. Now, you're probably also noticing that this is very much an illustration brush and not pixel art based, um, which I think is totally fine if you wanted to explore mixed styles like that. Uh, but in this case, I wanted to find a way to turn this into pixel art. So what I'm gonna do is grab the auto select tool and I'm gonna click through the main bulk of the cloud design, uh, the part where it's sort of entirely white rather than that faded edge. And with my selection made, I'll create a new layer and then flip over to the 50% pixel dithering brush and paint within this selection. Now we've got something that resembles the cloud design in terms of its overall silhouette. And when we zoom in, we can see that it's an entirely pixel based design. Uh, rather than having any soft fading edges to it. To complete the backdrop, I'm using the rectangular shape tool to lay in some buildings and create a basic city skyline. And for this, I've set the tool to the fill option and also set the anti-aliasing to the hard edges setting. After getting some of these basic blocks down, I went in with the dot pen to create some finer details and edges for the buildings. What's really cool here is that the detail work almost starts to interact with the clouds and the sky behind it, uh, since that dither pattern is in the same color. So there's a nice blend to everything here that kind of keeps that soft appearance. Finally, I decided to soften up the line work. Uh, right now it's in a full black color, but I keyed in sort of a dark brown and filled it into the line work layer to just wash it out a little bit. The other thing we can do is add a highlight color to some of the line work. And for this, I'm gonna mask off just the line work portion to make this application easier. So to create a custom layer mask based on a selection, I'm gonna control or command click on the layer icon to select the line work. Then I'll create a new layer 
and click on the icon here labeled Create Layer Mask. We can see the masked off portion here, and now when I brush anything on this layer, it's only going to show the portions that show through the mask design. So in this case, we're just seeing it affect the line work areas. What I'm going to do with this is to paint some light red on the upward facing pieces of the line work uh, to give kind of the suggestion of a highlight edge. For now, I'm working with the bright red uh, just so I can clearly see what I'm doing. Uh, but if we back off the opacity a bit, we'll get a more subtle effect. So here's how the final pixel art version looks. But there's still one more thing I want to try with this. Uh, because of these soft and painterly sort of finishes we've been implementing, it'd also be really cool to give this artwork an actual paper texture and a bit of weathering to it. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit. Um, before implementing these effects though, the first thing I need to do is resize my image by going up to Edit, Change Image Resolution, and I'm going to resize it by an even multiple of 2. What's very important here is that the interpolation method is set to the hard edges setting. That way it maintains those crisp pixels. From here I'm going to open up my material window because I've downloaded these paper textures from the Clip Studio Assets page. And that's been a pretty common theme so far, hasn't it? And uh, I'll just drag one of those paper designs onto my canvas and then rotate it and rescale it into place. To have it actually interact with the artwork below, I'm going to change the blending mode to something that'll provide that mix. You can get really different effects depending on what you select. But in my case, I like the way that the linear burn was looking, so I'm going to go with that one and then reduce the opacity to kind of fine tune the effect. I also like the way that the pin light blending mode was giving this sort of lighter effect, so I'm going to add another paper texture and then set it to pin light. Now I find this one to be a bit too much coverage than I need, so I'm just going to create a layer mask for this one and then using that same cloud brush from earlier, I'll bring out certain areas of this effect using this mask. Uh, just to make it a little bit patchy across the illustration. So in the end, we've got both this original clean pixel look and now the weathered sort of cardstock variant as well, um, which I kind of want to make into an actual postcard at this point. But overall, this was a lot of fun to explore a different workflow in a different presentation format like this. All right, so to close this out, let's take a look at this artwork on a CRT television for a bit of a retro flair which is a tradition over on my channel that I like to call CRT time. I appreciate you joining me for this series, and I hope you found some interesting tidbits to incorporate a 3D workflow into your own art. So thanks for watching.